My name is Bob Bauer. My name is Eric. Welcome our newest member, Sarah, to the R&D team. Today we're going to be talking about the product and the process. Let's first discuss where research occurs when it relates to a product or process. Sarah, let's pretend I'm a customer and I call you up and say, I need you to manufacture me a 5TX widget. Can your company do that? What would you say? As the owner, I would say, of course, but I will need the specifications. Now, what Eric, my customer, does not know is that the 5TX widget is not a production item. I would need to gather my key personnel to discuss if we have the technology and methods we need to meet Eric's expectations. This example illustrates where research occurs when it relates to a product or a process. Once Sarah's employees enter that room, the research phase of the project is started and does not end until uncertainty is eliminated as to whether she can meet Eric's specifications. The next two slides list various activities that would qualify for the R&D credit. Eric, I noticed the word design is highlighted in green in a lot of the examples. I'm not a designer. How would my activities qualify for the R&D credit? Great question, Sarah, and is a very common question I hear a lot. I'm not a designer, I am not an engineer, I don't have a degree, and my favorite, I'm just doing my job. The list goes on. Let me ask you something, Sarah. Have you ever had to problem solve an issue? Of course. Basically, that's what research and development is. It's your company's employees solving problems to meet client specifications or improving a process. As long as you are performing a qualified task that meets the four-part test, you are performing R&D even if that task is just doing your job. The creation of prototypes is often a common activity when performing research and development. It's important to know when developing prototypes, what activities qualify and what expenses can be captured. Let's look at an example. Sarah, our company needs to develop a new printer in order to compete in the ever-changing market. I need you to develop a printer that contains digital technology features. Make sure you call Bob. He's our accountant. He said there are really good tax credits available. Okay, I will get it done. Hey, Bob, my company is developing a new printer, and my boss, Eric, told me to contact you before I get started. Hi, Sarah. I'm glad you called before starting this project. It sounds like you might have potential qualifying research and development expenditures. Let's make sure we document all the costs related to this project, and I can take a look at it for you to see if you get any credit benefit. Hi, Sarah. How's the project going? Well, unfortunately, the first prototype crashed and burned, so we had to scrap the entire printer. The second prototype met the defined functionality, but was missing key features. We were able to use what we learned in those first two prototypes, and our third printer was a success. Hi, Bob. Sarah completed the project. How did we come out on the credit? Hi, Eric. Since the first printer was scrapped, we were able to capture all of your employees' qualified time that they worked on the project. We were also able to take all of the qualified material costs related to that first printer. Oh great, even though the printer was a failure, we can get a credit for that? Good. That's right, and since the second printer was not commercially viable and never made it to production, we can capture all the qualifying wages and supplies for that printer as well. For the third printer, I was only able to capture the material and time costs related to the new features. The following two slides illustrates what activities do not qualify as R&D activities. For example, one of my clients manufactures furniture in America, but they hired a furniture designer in Canada to research new designs. This would not qualify as R&D because the research was performed outside of the U.S. The performance of ordinary quality control testing is another example of a non-qualifying activity. Another common activity that does not qualify for research and development is research done after commercial production. Generally, when a company starts production, all uncertainty has been eliminated. The research has stopped and production has begun. Eric, in the prototype example, Bob talked about documenting the costs related to R&D. What does he mean by that? The key to supporting the R&D credit is proper documentation. The current slide provides examples from the IRS audit guide that they expect a company to maintain to support the R&D tax credit. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Our contact information can be found on the current slide. If you have any questions or would like to discuss anything in more detail, please do not hesitate to contact us.